Hi family, welcome to Pistis of YouTube channel. I welcome you in the name of the Lord. This channel was divinely inspired by the Holy Spirit to build the faith of men. So as you are watching this video, make sure that you share the link, you like the video, and then you click on the notification button so you can get notified whenever we are uploading any new video. Thank you so much for joining. We love and celebrate you. Thank you. So three components very quickly. Let this be a lesson for us. If you're a man of God here, please listen. If you truly want to see the miracle working power of Jesus flow in and through your life, genuine miracles, then here are the keys. Are you ready? Component number one, if you want to create that atmosphere that makes for the supernatural, that makes for the miraculous. Component number one, genuine passion and a heart of total surrender. Write it down. The first non-negotiable component. You want to create the atmosphere that is ever conducive for signs and wonders. It is the atmosphere of genuine passion and total surrender. Matthew chapter 11 from verse 28 and 29. Total surrender. Hear what Jesus said. Come unto me, all ye that labor and a heavy leaden he says and i will give you rest i will give you rest if you come unto me notice he didn't say follow me yet he said come unto me it takes a lot to come unto him to come unto him means that you realize you are inadequate to come unto him means that you realize that by yourself and unassisted there is not so much you can do we live in a world that is full of pride we live in a world where we are not committed to anything at all but if you must create that atmosphere of the glory and the power of god it comes with a price and the first component is genuine passion passion towards what god passion towards god and passion towards the things of god god is not a herbalist god is not a magician god does not play games with people if you come to him there must be a determination within your heart the psalmist said, Oh Lord, you are my God. Early will I seek you. My heart longs for you. Give it to us, Psalm 63. It says, To see your power and your glory. Oh God, thou art my God. Early will I seek you. My soul thirsted for you. Say passion. One more time. Say passion. My flesh longed for you in a dry and thirsty land where no water is. What for? Verse 2. To see your power and your glory as I have seen in the sanctuary. Passion for God and total surrender. Surrendering your intellect. Surrendering your logic. Can I tell you? Years ago I listened to Benny Hinn and he made a statement that I appreciated so much. But now, having worked a bit in the miracle ministry, I can tell you I understand clearer what he was saying. He said this, that in many of his meetings, please look up, listen carefully, that many of his meetings, you would find out that if people, every time people came for his meetings, if their attention was just on their healing, their problem, whatever was wrong with them, most times they would not receive. They would have to take their eyes away from the problem and focus on Jesus. Because for many people, you see, they do not agree that God has the absolute power to help them. So they just feel, God, I don't want you to come into every aspect. I've managed this one. I just want you to touch this and that. And God says, you are either ready to get out of the way and allow me step in. Or you finish fighting and exhaust your pride. And we live in a world that is largely philosophical. There is over-dependence on the flesh. So when people come for a miracle service like this, for instance, you are trusting God to reach you and open doors. But from head to toe, you are full of yourself. My certificates, my qualifications, I have all these things. All I need is just a bit of anointing on it and I'm on fire. And God says, no, except the Lord built a house. They labor in vain that build it. Except the Lord watches over a city. The watchmen watch it, but in vain. It is vain to wake up early in the morning, listen carefully, to sleep late in the night, only to eat the bread of sorrow. 
We have seen skilled people suffer as if God did not call them. And we have seen weak people, weak people. Proverbs chapter 3 and verse 5, it says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart. And it says, lean not on your own understanding. It is the same God who gave you understanding. To lean does not mean to not use it. It means when it has to do with dealing with God, do not bring your understanding to compete with him. His realm is higher than your realm. His thoughts higher than your thoughts. Most times people come to God, but they are not absolutely surrendered. Have your way, Lord. Have your way. You know that song? Have your way, Lord. Have your way. Have your way, Lord. Have your way. Oh, Lord. Have your way. Lord, I am here so that you will lift me. It is not my assignment to tell you how. If I could help myself, I would not need to come to you. Don't sit down when you are saying, Lord, lift me and your mind has held NMPC. You are not going to let... That is not how God lifts. Trust him enough to get out of the way. How you would do it, oh God, I do not know. But I know that I am in your presence. Let the lifter lift me. Over dependence on our intellect, our philosophies, will always corrupt that atmosphere for the miraculous. Can I tell you this? Many times when I'm praying, preparing for any meeting, especially the miracle service, sometimes God will usually open me to visions of what happened, what is going to happen, sometimes literally, or sometimes I just get pictures of people's cases and the rest, but I prepare my sermon. You see that? I do my due diligence, but I never come to stand here with just an over-calculation of this. I come, he's the Lord of hosts. And when I come, having prepared myself, I am completely yielded to him to move as he wills. In as much as I have a structure, but he knows that when it has to do with this meeting, he can move as he wills. You see, because I don't know except it is revealed to me. I cannot know what is wrong with you and I cannot know the area of desperation and the area of need. And it is pride to stand in the way of the one who knows. In fact, it's wickedness. It's not just pride. I'm trying to help you, but I'm ignorant. There is the one who knows exactly where to touch you. And now I will not let him touch you. And sometimes you can be the limitation yourself because you can think this is what you need. But from the mind of God, what you need is totally different. It is up to you to say, Lord, I, I truly believe that you can visit me. Surrender. There are times you can have pain and you may go to the doctor with, with the arrogance of an amateur and almost guessing and you can say, doctor, I am sure it is this thing. And the doctor laughs at you and laughs at your ignorance and tests you and tells you something totally different and says that's what is wrong with you. But you are feeling another symptom and yet the doctor from a professional standpoint, you think it's a financial problem. Open up your heart and let God visit you. You will find out it has nothing to do with finances. In fact, sometimes you can think it's an issue of ill health, but it is not an issue of ill health. It's the ministry of the devourer. He knows that the only way or the most predictable way to destroy your finances is your health. If he spoils your car, you will leave it there. You will not fix the car. So he spoils your body because he knows you will not leave that body that way. And since he has found out that you like this body and you want to live long in it, he will continue to create affliction so that your finances will suffer. So to you now, you can think the real problem is finances. But when you come to God, he will tell you it is not finances. The real problem is ABC. Listen, allow God to interpret your situation to you. The first atmosphere is that atmosphere of total surrender. Lord, I have come before you. As far as I know, there are 10 major problems with me. Disfavor, no helpers, oppression. That's the best that I can know. But I've come to you. You are the wisdom of God. Diagnose me. And do you know sometimes you see demon spirits walk like an octopus. How many of you know an octopus? That creature with many expressions like legs. 
It can touch your finance, same spirit. Touch your marriage, same spirit. You think there are different issues, but they are caused by one and the same spirit. How many of you would like to cut down a tree by removing the leaf one by one? How intelligent does that sound? And you are trying to say, Lord, can you help me remove all the leaves in this area? And God says, no. I know what the problem is. The leaves will grow. Allow me to come and bulldoze that thing from the root. And sometimes when he throws it from the root, you will still see the leaf looking green. And he says, go and rest. It's dead. And he said, no, it is still green. He says, I, I know what I did. Ah! Total dependence. Some of you, it may be ministry. Ministry is not growing. And based on your interpretation, it is because I'm in an area that is not my, maybe territorial area. Maybe I'm a Yoruba person among houses or a Hausa person among Yorubas. All those things are just flimsy reasons. God is telling you the diagnosis is there is no favor on you. Period. Lord, why is it that when I get a job in two weeks, they drive me? In two weeks, they drive me. And you have come with the name of your boss in your prayer request now. Hoping that by laying hands on him, maybe God will kill him or do something. But even if the man dies, for instance, will you really be free? Because what is really wrong with you is a pattern. It's a demo. These are altars that have nothing to do. Your boss just happens to be the one that was used to oppress you because of something on you. Have you seen people who complain and even if the object of complaint is taken away from them, the situation does not change. It's not about the person causing trouble now. It's about something on you that keeps attracting trouble. Are we learning? Atmosphere. Component number one. So there has to be genuine passion for the Lord and then complete surrender. Why do you surrender to him? You surrender to allow his wisdom go before you. To allow him be the one to truly interpret what you need. When you go to the hospital, imagine that you go to the hospital and you are seated with a consultant and you just say, sir, where do you keep your syringes? Where do you keep this? And he says, what for? He says, I want to inject myself. I know exactly what is wrong with me. I just want you to be a witness. <laughs> and you are breaking that thing and about to give yourself injection. And he said, you are even doing it the wrong way. He said, no problem. I know what I'm doing. And the man says, why are you then here? When you go to a consultant, even if you are a consultant yourself, you are not a consultant in that area. So when you go, you sit down like every other person and say, doctor or consultant, ABC is wrong with me. And you trust him and depend on him. Don't come to God tonight. In fact, some of you in all honesty, in all honesty, as you are seated right now, you cannot truly articulate what is wrong with you. You can only tell the symptoms of what is wrong with you. My money has been hanging for five months. Could it really be a financial issue? Let's find out. My health has been having a problem. Could it really be a health issue? Let's find out. Are you learning what I'm saying now? So if I'm here right now and the Holy Spirit says, everybody stand up and start jumping around and dancing as stupid as it is, that's exactly what I'm going to do. It does not make sense to me, but you have to understand that I'm not the one doing it. It is the one who knows what is wrong with you. Are we together? I never stand on stage ministering to God's people and then close that door to the wisdom of the Spirit. I am aware of how limited and how very ignorant I am as far as having the full capacity to help God's people is concerned. You have come because you believe in Jesus and you have come because you believe in me and I'm grateful for that trust. But let me tell you, unassisted, I'm only wasting your time. I can only share scripture and say, let's pray. Do you know what it takes to stand from here and begin to make declarations over someone's life and like that, doors are opening. You are intelligent. Can a man do that unassisted? No. But I'm happy to inform you I'm not alone here. Not alone. Hmm. And the Lord walking with them. And the Lord walking with them. And the Lord walking with them. Number two. The second component that creates the atmosphere for miracles, for signs and wonders. Are you ready? Is deep heartfelt worship. Deep heartfelt worship. Apostle, I'm not a musician. 
but you want solutions but you want solutions can i tell you if you are not a worshiper there are certain dimensions and certain levels of the atmosphere of the miraculous that your mind your life would not command you see a worshiper is not just one who sings a worshiper is one whose life words and then singing creates that atmosphere for the presence of God to be made manifest singing is only a tool you can sing and you are a singer and a musician and yet not a worshiper true worship starts from the heart true worship is a response is a revelation you know who God is heartfelt worship second chronicles chapter 5 from verse of Lord faithful and true Lamb of God I worship you Shalabakos King of kings Lord of lords Faithful and true Lamb of God I worship you Praise the bread of life Emmanuel God with us, the one who saves. We praise the cup of life, that glorious spring that washes our sins away. Hello, Imadona. Hello, Madonna. Hello, Hello. Can I tell you this? I've worked with God a bit. Let me teach you how to neutralize negative atmospheres. Introduce an atmosphere of deep, heartfelt presence carrying worship not senseless songs that don't carry any atmosphere there are songs that were written by people who were just ambitious i'm talking of atmospheres that carry fire and the power that can change but thou O oh lord had a shield for me my glory the lifter up of my head A shield for me, my glory, the lifter of my head. When you set that atmosphere, let me tell you what begins to happen. The power of the atmosphere for worship, because you see, the way God works is that whatever dimension of Him He wants you to experience. He, through the ministry of the Holy Spirit, will put it in your heart to begin to sing that dimension. He becomes what you are saying. Worship and singing is the protocol for experiencing Him. He said, come before Him with singing. So if He wants to move as a mighty God, the Holy Spirit, do you know, there are times that songs come as weapons, not as music. Are we together? There are certain things called songs of deliverance. You, they are not special numbers that is the weapon that God has given you for that victory have you woken up one morning and you find out it can be the line of a song and you will keep singing it for days can I tell you whenever you have that prompting don't stop keep singing that song in that song you are singing it may not make sense to anybody but there is victory being birthed in it oh oh
Sade Kaparaka Puska Bila Pasu Prande Gede Let me tell you this when God really wants to give you victory there are times that a grace will come on you and you will do night vigil of worship not just prayer you will just set the atmosphere and in that in that atmosphere it's like something is boiling in the spirit when you really have warfare it is not only prayer you do the atmosphere you want the presence of God to come and to rest and tabernacle with you you need to master the art of creating that atmosphere if you don't know how to sing people have already done the singing for you go through the labor of creating that atmosphere let the weight of your glory fall let it cover all the earth let the weight of your glory fall let it cover all the earth let it cover all the earth let it cover all the earth listen i was caught up in the realm of the spirit many years ago and this is where i had this song i didn't write it it was a song that came by revelation that that shekinah it is the desire of God that that glory blankets the nations from city to city and from continent to continent. Let it cover all. Let it cover all the earth. Let it cover all the earth. You see, let me tell you something with worship. Worship can take away falsehood from you in prayer. Because there are times you come to God with all kinds of human calculations and in worship just takes you over. There are times that your emotions are so connected to what you are doing. You are no longer conscious of what I wore, what I bought. You don't know when you can, whether it's to lie down or roll before him. Worship purifies your desire. I do not know one great man who truly walks in the miraculous and in signs and wonders who ignores this mystery of heartfelt worship blessed is he who comes in the name of our God just help us under the anointing blessed is he who comes in the name of our God holy holy Blessed is he who comes in the name of our God. Hosanna, Hosanna. Blessed is he who comes in the name of our God. Many years ago, I was in a meeting in Kaduna and it was under such an intense atmosphere of the spirit and while we worshiped just forgetting ourselves in his presence you see most let me tell you the reason why most people do not experience God is we're in a hurry for everything in a hurry for everything God come sharp sharp bless me sharp sharp and leave sharp sharp have my everything you have my everything it was in that meeting this song came you have my everything you have my everything take all of me all of me Lord you have my everything take all of me all of me Lord you have my everything Take all of me, all of me, Lord, you have my everything. Anoint my everything, use my everything, I release my everything. 
You have my everything Take all of me All of me, Lord You have my everything Take all of me All of me, Lord You have my everything Take all of me All of me, all of me, Lord You have my everything Take all of me All of me, Lord Take all of me Use all of me All of me Listen While you are in this atmosphere Worshipping him The angel of the Lord is in your office Correcting things because you are not just singing a special number you have not even started praying you decided to set that atmosphere correcting things sing and worship over your sick patient and you will watch him arise like the mighty God correcting things it only works for those who engage it not those who know about it heartfelt worship heartfelt worship heartfelt worship that you stretch in that atmosphere you see one of the reasons hold on please we're going to pray shortly one of the reasons why i always suggest the night is not a ritual but you see most times in the day we are distracted before you even kneel down a call has come with all kinds of things so many people are awake sometimes they can just be distractions but in the night when everybody is asleep just you and your savior the maker of your destiny it's not only the heavens and the earth he makes Kenneth Copeland met with Bishop Oyedepo and he said you claim that we are the ones who taught you on the subject of faith and church growth and all of these things how come God has so honored you like this and Bishop Oyedepo replied he said to him in addition to the things we have learned from you <clears throat> I sang and I danced every one of these people to this place worship worship and th 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 there is an exchange that happens in the place of worship your weakness for his strength your limitation for his power you'll never leave the place of worship the way you went please hear what i'm telling you this is one of the ways i prepare for the miracle service and you are there just saying lord i'm singing to you if you do not help me i cannot i can't help the, the people are coming with challenges world over what strength do i have to help them and that Shekinah comes to mantle you and you come out endued with power power with proof are you learning the second component as far as creating that climate for the miraculous is heartfelt worship number three the last and then we'll pray I'm already sensing a very strong anointing here I'm under the shadow of your wings Your influence is all over me I am under the shadow of your wings Your influence is all over me Yeah I am under the shadow of your wings Your influence is all over me I am under the shadow of your wings Your influence is all over me oh. The third component that creates the atmosphere for the supernatural is faith. Faith. Matthew chapter 13 and verse 58. Faith. Mm. There will be such a move of the Spirit in this place tonight. Such a move of the Spirit in this place. Matthew chapter 13. Please, I want you to bring the following people out now. I'm seeing, I just saw light. 
from all the in the main auditorium and all of the overflows and the lord is telling me there is something that is coming upon them help them bring them out Play the guitar for me. There are still more people you're bringing out. I'm seeing a book open before me, and I'm seeing a hand pointing on that book. And God is saying, "Is the season of these people? There is something He's doing." Paratu shadika tabaratuzia seasons your season there's nothing that will stop it when god has opened that is the season is open bring them out oh, 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 oh. Turn again the captivity of Zion. We were like them that dream. Hallelujah. Who is Jeremiah? I'm hearing a name Jeremiah. Who is Jeremiah? Is there a gentleman called Jeremiah? You are wearing a t-shirt. Jeremiah. Is there someone like that? Jeremiah. What's your name? Come. I want to pray for you. There is a man of God here. You are stepping into the prophetic. There is, I, I just saw like an eagle. And every time I see that, this is a symbolism of the prophetic. The Lord has been training you. You do not even know that he's calling you into the prophetic ministry. In the name of Jesus, may that hand from Zion rest upon you. In the name of Jesus, the son of the living God. Jeremiah. In the name of Jesus, you two stand here where they are here. I want to pray for them now. By the power of the Holy Spirit. Thank you so much for watching. I hope and believe that you've been blessed and transformed by just watching this video. And as you watch, don't forget to share the link and then also click on the notification bell so that you can get notified whenever we upload new videos. Thank you so much.